financial system, uh, going after the enablers who are feeding the Russian war machine, closing off access to technology, to financial resources that help them retool and rearm. All of that is what we are doing to push back against uh, Russia, and that takes both an international effort and pooling all the expertise across our own government, and that's what we've been able to do, I think, quite effectively with things like Task Force Klepto Capture and the Repo Task Force. Thank you for your answer. And uh, building on Senator Tillis' question, do I understand there's an interagency conversation ongoing about implementation of the statute that authorizes some intelligence sharing for purposes of supporting potential ICC prosecutions. Do you have a timeline for when that deliberation may be concluded so we can move forward with implementation of the law? I do not have a timeline, Senator. But it's being worked through diligently? It is, Senator. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Ossoff. Senator Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Monica, welcome. Thank you. Uh, you have a very important job. You're the number two person in the Department of Justice. Every U.S. attorney reports to you. The U.S. Marshals report to you. You are responsible for day-to-day -day operations of the Department of Justice, and in particular, the criminal justice aspects of the Department of Justice. Is all of that correct? That's correct. It is unfortunate, Ms. Monaco, that as you look back over the last two and a half years, this Department of Justice, I believe, has been the most partisan Department of Justice we've ever seen. And that is directly contrary to the mission of DOJ. DOJ is meant to be nonpartisan. It is meant to enforce the law, regardless of party. I had hopes that Merrick Garland would actually do that when he was confirmed. Those hopes have been shattered. You have been a loyal deputy standing alongside that partisan corruption of Department of Justice. You have been willing to devote massive resources to targeting individuals that are perceived to be political opponents of the White House. And you have been willing to devote zero resources to protecting individuals who are perceived to be political opponents of the White House. I want to ask you about a statute you've been asked about already, 18 U.S.C. 1507. You're familiar with this statute? Yes. It's a criminal statute that says whoever with the intent of influencing any judge pickets or parades in or near a building or residences occupied or used by such judge shall be fined or imprisoned under this title or imprisoned not more than one year or both. Now, the entire country has seen hundreds of protesters outside the homes of Supreme Court justices night after night after night. You turn on your TV and you see violations of this criminal statute over and over and over again. How many prosecutions has DOJ brought under 18 U.S.C. Section 1507 under your leadership? There have not been no prosecutions under 1507. We're pursuing an attempted murder case against an individual who Zero is the answer. Justice Kavanaugh. I'm quite aware, and, and you're responsible for that, allowing these protests night after night after night, the violent threat of homicide of the individual who traveled across the country attempting to murder a Supreme Court justice, that was fueled by DOJ refusing to enforce this statute. Now, it's not an accident that DOJ refused to enforce this statute. The U.S. Marshals put up, gave a presentation. The General Counsel's Office of the U.S. Marshals, if you look at one of the pages from that presentation, the General Counsel's Office stated the goals of the residential and personal protection mission. Keep SCOTUS justices and their family free from physical harm. Do not interfere with lawful First Amendment protected activity. Avoid, unless absolutely necessary, criminal enforcement actions involving the protester protesters, particularly on public space, and making arrests and initi initiating prosecutions is not the goal of the presidents, of the marshal's presence at SCOTUS residences. Are you familiar with this presentation? 
I am. I'm familiar with the fact that the U.S. Marshal Service Director has been explicit, has been clear that the Attorney General has repeatedly directed him to enforce all federal laws, including 1507, and that his number one priority, and that of his many deputies assigned to a 24-7 security presence, is to protect the life, the safety, the property of the justices Did, and did you or anyone family. from the DAG's office meet with the U.S. Marshal Service and discuss Section 1507? I regularly meet with uh, the Director of the Marshal Service. The and, Attorney and have you General, discussed 1507? The, I discussed the, uh, the Attorney General has been quite clear, and I have been quite clear with the Director of the Marshal Service. The Are Attorney you familiar with this presentation? I've seen those slides, if they're the ones that uh, Senator Britt presented to the Attorney General. Um, but I want to be quite clear, Senator, about um, the direction given to the Marshal Service through the director of the Marshal Service. He has been clear that the Attorney General directed him repeatedly to enforce all federal laws to With make respect, his Ms. number Monaco, one that, that, priority. That is demonstrably false because this is written instruction, making arrests and initiating prosecution is not the goal. That's not an instruction to enforce the law. That is exactly the opposite. It is 180 degrees. It is instructing them. It is not the goal to arrest anybody, despite the fact that the criminal statute said they shall be imprisoned. You made a political decision, Merrick Garland made a political decision, that because you agree with the protesters, you don't like the decision the Supreme Court justices made, the marshals were instructed, don't arrest anyone and don't enforce federal law. Isn't that correct? It is not correct because the attorney general and I and the marshal service director are so concerned about potential threats to the justices. The attorney general directed in an unprecedented step, 24-7. Not what this says in writing. 24-7. What does this say in writing? I don't have the right glasses on for that, but Senator... The Attorney General was very clear with the Director of the Marshal Service, and the Marshal Service Director has said the same thing. The word that not the is number, even underlined. The number one priority given to the Marshal Service for their unprecedented protection detail for the Supreme Court justices is to protect their life, their but safety, and their property. to ignore 1507. To protect their life, their to safety. To ignore federal criminal law. Respectfully disagree with that characterization. That's what sir. the written instruction says. Not is underlined. Do not make arrests. Do not initiate prosecutions. Up is not down. The director of the Marshal Service has been very clear. The attorney general directed him to enforce all federal laws, but that his number one priority is to ensure the safety Ms. Monica, and the protection. Ms. Monica, what you're saying is objectively false. The time of the senator has expired. Uh, there are no f further members to ask in the five-minute round, and we're going to conclude the hearing. I want to thank the Deputy Attorney General. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, I will see you guys in the next video. Till then, stay blessed.